Hey y'all, I'm Becca, and I'm so excited to be sharing a word with you today. Um, I love that this class gives us, the, gives us the opportunity to share with each other, to grow, and to also just be totally out of our comfort zones. This is completely out of mine. I work in kids ministry, so the best thing I get to do is play with three-year-olds, snuggle some babies, and um, I know that God is stretching me, and I'm so excited to go on that journey with all of you. So before I get started, I just am going to pray. I'm very excited about the word that God has given me, and I hope that you enjoy it as well. God, I thank you so much for who you are, Lord. I thank you, God, that you're using me as a vessel to share a word that you've put on my heart, Lord. I pray that these words will not be my own, God, but that they will be directed by your Holy Spirit. God, have your way through me and allow our hearts to be open to the message you want to pour into each one of us. I thank you for this time together. I thank you, Lord. Um, that in you we can learn, we can trust each other, God, that we can help each other grow. And I thank you for those opportunities that you've blessed each of us with. In your name we pray, amen. So today we're going to be diving into the text of John 15, 1 through 11. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and go there. I believe this is one of the most amazing texts in this gospel, and I'll be reading it from the English Standard Version. And it says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it, may, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it, and it will be. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved him. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. I don't know about y'all, but I have had some pretty incredible people in my life. Those who have mentored me, those who have helped me, they've been close to me in hard times and good times, and others who have truly shaped me and who I am becoming today. I've also had those people in my life, like you probably, that have occupied too much space for far too long. Uh, as a young girl, I thought it was so important to have all these friendship that, friendships that just really didn't benefit me. They weren't helpful. And of course, at that time, my world would have severely fallen apart if I would have lost one of them as my friends. These friendships were not the necessary, the healthiest. We struggled with the same thing, so we didn't bring each other up. Instead, we allowed each other to stay in this struggle uh, because we were comfortable. We liked it. We had support from one another. We could struggle together. Therefore, there was never an urge to get better. Uh, the thing is, I really, um, I had other friends and mentors in my life that saw these influences around me and encouraged me to walk away from such a toxic environment. I wasn't ready to be alone, though. That's the thing. I wasn't ready to be whipped away from the comfort of these sins and these friendships that really didn't have any accountability with. I wasn't ready to be pruned. So think about your friends. Think about those around you that allow to influence you in ways that you don't allow others to influence you. Are they drawing you closer to Jesus, or are they allowing you to stay in your comfort zone? Hanging on like a dead branch. Do you realize that you have access to so much more? The Lord urges us and invites us into his closeness, into his resting place. He invites us to stay close to him, to abide in his abundance of joy and full life. In our text today, God is not only inviting us into his closeness, into his abiding in him, into his safety. He is saying that that is our all-time go-to, that that needs to be who we go to, that he gives us life and he gives us freshness and he makes us safe. The Lord is so personal. He should be our best friend, our biggest cheerleader, our primary confidant. Um, 
you know, in our primary go-to. And at times, it may seem like God is such a far-off place, like this distant person that we're told to access, we're told to invite into our struggle, we're told to do all these things, and then we cannot comprehend how to do that. He's not here. How am I supposed to do that? The truth is God's presence is everywhere. And when we abide in Him, then we are able to access that to its fullness. He's not a God... Um, he is not a God who we read about and talk aimlessly to the ceiling for. No, he we can relate to him. We can talk to him. We can share secrets with him who knit us together perfectly in his image. He wants us to be close because he knows us anyway. So what does this have to do with our text? Uh, as we read verses 1 and 2, it says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. To bear more fruit. These verses really set the tone of who Jesus is present, presenting himself to be. He's the only way to God. This brings us to our first, our first point out of three that I'm going to be presenting. And it is, we are connected to God. If we are not bearing fruit, we'll remove us and take us away. Our God does not threaten us. This is not a threat of him kicking us off his team. It's simply stated, if we don't belong to him, then what part are we playing with him? What part does he have in our lives that he has created us? He knows our lives. He knows our plan. But if we do not abide in who he is, how can we be present in who he is? Uh, what's crazy to me is that if we do belong to Jesus, he prunes us. That hurts. Pruning does not sound fun. Sign me up for that. Definitely not. In all the sense of reality, that is the very essence of where our relationship with God grows. Have you ever felt him challenging you, breaking out of your comfort zone? Just like I talked about earlier, this is not in my comfort zone. But I'm going to grow because God is pruning me and pruning off insecurities. And he's taking off the bad things so I can bear more positive fruit. He's stretching us. Uh, have you ever felt him stretching you where you feel like you're just going to snap? Like you have no more left. If he wasn't doing those things, do you think we ever fully abide in him? I mean to reach the abundance of love that he holds for us. Uh, verse 4 says, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. The word abide comes from manom, and it means to remain, to dwell, to stay. We are hidden in the love of Christ. We dwell in his safety, in his presence, and in his love. This reminds me of the old myth of eagles. You know, a lot of, I was really excited because I heard this once um, in school, actually, and they said that, an eagle climbs into the cleft of a, a cleft of the rock, and when his feathers are dead, and when his feathers are frayed, and they're not working well anymore, they climb into the safety of the cleft of a rock, and they begin to pick and prune every feather out of their skin. Although while I was researching this, I found it to be fake, I thought it was such a great analogy of um, what can we do in the safety and dwelling in the Lord. When we abide in the Lord, we can pick and prune all of these things off of us that are not going to allow us to grow. And that's what the Lord does with us. Um, so in this, he prunes their feathers. They take them out one by one. And after doing that, um, it's this old myth says that their feathers would regrow. So they'd be renewed and they'd be new and they'd fly to the highest of heights um, again and soar and be majestic and all of these things. And we need to also dwell in the safety of our rock, who is Jesus. Go through some uncomfortable pruning and, and soar to the highest of heights. Or we can be like vultures, and vultures prey off of roadkill, like those friends that do not lift us up or push us more towards Jesus. And verse 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. A vine is not like any other plant, and I think it's amazing that the Lord is using this illustration. A vine can be cut down or pruned to the root, and it will grow back and still produce life. It gives life to those branches. The root, which is Jesus, presses itself into us. Jesus presses his love and his nourishment into us when we, when we abide in him. He wants us to dwell in him and exist in him, our very being, being in him as he is the giver of life. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. 
the risk factors right here. If we think we can be become independent and not dwell in the safety of our Lord, my second point is, is that we can be disconnected from Jesus. Good deeds will never get us to our destination. They'll never get us to where we want to go, and they'll never get us to our source of life. God deeds will never get you. God deeds will get you to where you want to go. The way you stay connected through the source is abiding in Him. You cannot be the branch without the vine. You cannot become more like God without first knowing and understanding who He is and what He does for you. Knowing who you are and whose you are. When you abide in Him, you allow God to uh, just envelop all of who you are. You won't become who you don't hang out with. If you don't hang out with Jesus, you won't become like him, just like in our friend scenarios earlier. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown in the fire, and burned. The important part of this verse is not to get Jesus' statement mixed up. In verse 6, he is not saying whoever doesn't bear fruit will be thrown down. He says whoever does not abide in me will be thrown down and thrown into the fire. We can determine how we abide in, in Christ by looking where our priorities are at. How are you abiding? Are you bearing fruit? Are you a dead branch? Are you abiding in him and seeing the fruit of that? Or are you trying to do it on your own and that dead branch that falls off and is burned in the fire? If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My third point is, as we abide in him, he shows up. He shows up in our promise for our prayers. As we abide in him, he shows us promise for our prayers. As we abide in the Lord, our desires and hearts will automatically align with his. Therefore, fruit will be produced. He's not asking us to bear our own fruit. It isn't possible. We can't do anything without him. That is for greater kingdom purpose. We have to have him on our side. How would we get through? How would we know what we're supposed to be doing if we didn't have his Holy Spirit to guide and direct us? It's not possible. He'll produce the fruit that has already been planted. How will we abide in the Lord? How will we choose to be pruned even when it isn't the most comfortable? All he wants from us is to come away with him, to simply be in his presence, and he already has the rest covered. I urge you guys, as you continue, read this passage, see what it means for you. I have never been so enlightened than through this study and these words. I always thought, well, what does that have to do with me? Branches and vines, I don't know what that means. It is so personal. Our God is so personal, and it's so beautiful that he pushes his love into us when we abide in him. When we choose to be a part of his roots, he brings nourishment to our lives. So I urge you to find your nourishment. Find where it is. See in your life what you need to do to, to cut off, to be pruned off so that you can bear fruit. Look at your friendships. I never even thought of that as being pruned, but friendships are so important. You know, that old phrase of, do your friend friends are like an elevator. Do they bring you up or do they bring you down? Guys, I urge you that you just continue to abide in the Lord. Find out what that means for you and go from there. So let's pray. God, I thank you for this time spent together. God, I thank you, Lord. Um, that you push your love into us, that your nourishment fills our bones, your nourishment brings um, just life instead of dryness, God. I thank you for who you are. I thank you, Lord, that you have a plan for each and every one of us, God. And I pray that as we go throughout um, our lives and our next seasons of life, for those of us graduating, God, I pray that you continue to be our number one, that you continue to be the roots of who we are and what we do. I love you and I thank you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening.